three organizations of Zero Project in that link 2020 and one or NGO from Latin America presented best practices to develop projects which guarantee uh, capacities for children with disability outside of the room or together with regular school environment, moderated by Alejandra Escobar from Best Papis Chile. Please remember, during this session, you can have questions through, through the questions and answer sessions, which is to the right of your screen, and send your comment by by interacting with other participants. Also, you can follow us through our social networks, zeroprojectslatam.org, both in Twitter as in Facebook. And remember to use our hashtag, which is zero, zero project Latam org. Please continue, Alejandra. Thank you, Carolina, for the introduction. I am very happy to be able to moderate this session, which, as you said, has, has formal education, non-formal inclusive education. As Karina said, I am Alejandra Escobar, which is a differential teacher and executive director of Best Bodies Chile, which is a non-profit organization whose mission is to develop social and work capacities through, uh, through people with disabilities and leading leadership. And all, before going to our expositors, I wanted to make a brief introduction to what we refer when we talk about non-formal education. And non-formal education, inclusive education, makes is reference to all those activities which are carried out outside school environment and outside this, 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 this structure of the system, aiming to develop intellectual capacities and abilities or in everybody, both with disabilities as without disabilities that may belong to some type of project or program. This type of education is answers to all the processes and practices that involve a social group heterogeneous and diverse, which has an educational intentionality and a planning of a process of learnings and teachings. Only that in this situation, what we have happens outside the school environment. That is why a non-formal education, inclusive, is crucial for the development of L abilities and skills for children, young people, and adults with disabilities due to the fact that this takes you to complement your integral development of all the processes, particularly uh, very important that this is taken from a school stage, early school stage, a basic middle and school such that we can then carry out a transit uh, to independent and adult life. We, all the people who have uh, with disabilities having gone through a whole of this process. So in order to talk with further detail about these issues, we have these expositors in this panel who, as Karina mentioned, they belong to three awarded organizations by Zero Project in the 2020 uh, version. on inclusive education and NGO coming from Latin America. All of them will present their projects and best practices which guarantee education of children with disabilities within the non-formal inclusive education. So to start, I want to present to you Adriana Gomez Alves, doctor in education, Univali, a master's in production and IT researcher and, and te teacher in the Universidad Valle do Itajai, Univali in sciences of computer engineering, computing 
this game designed and postgraduate in education psychology. Court, she coordinates the laboratory of design interaction where research is made in the interaction accessibility of educational games, of digital educational games. She's also with Regina Hostis, master's and doctorate in educational science at UFSC, postdoctoral in the education of London University with the cooperation of Stephen Ball, director of education in Uni Valley and a teacher in the program of postgraduate training in education. She coordinates the research group of the Observatory of Optative Policies and her research issues, scientific production and masters and orientations in doctorate is aimed at higher education policies and special education policies. They both will talk about their projects on design of digital games as developed by Univalley in Brazil. Welcome. Gracias. Nós é, temos um slides para compartilhar. I will, I will share with you the following. Adriana, podes começar. You can start. Thank you. My name is Adriana. I am a researcher at the postgraduate program in education at Univali Brazil. I used to be a software developer when I discovered the power of techniques on education to people with disability. And I am uh, Regina Hostings. I'm also a professor and research at postgraduate program in education. And so today, we will present you our project Game Design by Children in Inclusive School, Development of Imagination and Creativity. The next, Pantaja, uh, is our university. Uh, it's located in southern Brazil, in the state of Santa Catarina, and it is the largest non-public university in the state. It's composed by no, nine campuses and 55 years old of operation and more than 23,000 of students. And the next, the, the essence of project is the creation of digital game by children in inclusive school. We define a framework to promote the creative, collaborative, and collective work of children with and without disabilities. The process is mediated by researchers and undergraduate students from education, design, and computer science. We believe that game design as a pedagogical proposal develops higher process of creative thinking and inclusion of students with disabilities. And Adriana. Next, please. The framework has four stages. The first one is involvement. It consists on the participants' engagement and establish a trusting relationship between educators and children, enabling them to move on to later steps. The second is experience. It aims to increase children's knowledge about analogical and digital games through moments of leisure and reflection about games. The third is transposition. It promotes the perception about the process of creating a digital games. Children can create, can create their own, own games in digital media using authoring tools. At last, the fourth stage is digital game creation. It consists of applying digital game development techniques in the specification of a digital game, the implementation led by the undergraduate students with the participation of children proposes that the creative process is not limited by the complex knowledge for coding, 
nor the authoring tools that establish specific genres of games. Next, please. The project impacts the education and inclusion of all children in a special way it develops higher mental process of the children with disabilities who act in an equivalent way to the others involved in the design, development, and evaluation of digital games. The practice involves school and university and promotes new teaching and learning strategies with the exchange between teachers and students from different levels of education. Next, please. We applied the framework with three groups of children. The workshops held at schools at the regular classes once a week for one hour and a half during eight months each. The first application involved four nine years old students, including two students with intellectual disabilities enrolled in the third year of elementary school. After that, we applied the practice at two different schools involving 25 years students, each one. From the total, there were nine students with intellectual disabilities. Next, please. Through practice, we created three games, digital games with children, toys that create life, the stolen diamond and Chile on a dangerous mission. Next, please. We highlight the undergraduate students' participation at workshops with children and in the development of the games. The practice favor interdisciplinarity and the exchange between higher education and basic education. Next, please. Well, the project was financing from federal and state government agencies and next slide, we are talking about the, our next steps. We'll be to analyze data from these two new practices and adapt the framework. For the next year, we intend to implement the practices in a permanent way in the schools. And the first way is to implement the practices at Univali Basic School as optional workshops, and we will propose to government agencies a project to define education policy for the practices implementation in the school at Santa Catarina Estates. We sincerely appreciate this opportunity to present our research to you, and thank you very much. Thank you very much. Muchísimas gracias, Adriana y Regina, por su Thank you very much, Adriana and Regina, for your presentation. As mentioned earlier, the questions will be at the end of all the exposition. So if you have any questions, I will make I will let you know. Thank you very much. To continue with our presentation, I want to present Rodrigo Andriani, who is responsible for the implementation of the initiatives for innovation, democracy, and governance for Trust for the America, a senior manager of the program. He works with local organizations, government, and agencies, cooperation in Latin America and the Caribbean in areas related to transparency. Uh, innovation and government and open, and they open data and public management. He's administrative in Buenos Aires and masters in management in projects of global school in administrations, project administration. Welcome, Rodrigo. Also with him is Maria de Lourdes Torres, project manager inclusion for people who have these capacities for the UTEM Santa Catarina current coordinator for people with disabilities who will present the project day laboratory laboratory inclusive for developed for the trust of the america in mexico welcome both of you hello good day alejandra and for everybody who's with us in this transmission in this broadcast and colleagues exposing with us 
and it's I'm so glad to be with you. We have a presentation to share for the project that we have been implemented some year, for some years around Monterrey, Mexico, in the Laboratory of Inclusive Education, DIA, and, and the Technological University of Santa Catarina. If we go to the next slide, my name is, as you I said, Alejandra is Rodrigo Iriani. I'm manager or senior manager of the, of the DIA program which is for democratizing information in the Americas. That's what it stands for. And this uh, general screenshot of the logic behind this program. And then my colleague Lourdes Kant from the university will explain you a little bit more in detail with the work that's been carried out by the U Santa Catarina University and the Innovation Laboratory. We go to the next slide. I can tell you that the Trust for the Americas is an organization affiliated to the OEA, and we work with alliance, public private alliance partnerships through inclusion and development and human rights security parameters as implemented by the OEA and the same parameters. If we follow, come to the next one. I. I in, can indicate that we work always with uh, partners, local partners in the different countries where we are present, aiming to provide opportunities, social opportunities, educational opportunities, and economic to various vulnerable communities in the region. The logic being that to provide access to these opportunities, innovation opportunities, uh, with the exchange of collaborative spaces, uh, technology, for those sectors or for those um, groups that often are without these opportunities. If we continue to the next, I wanted to acknowledge who makes possible our projects, always working with public-private alliances, in the same um, slide, you can see that we have some projects in more than 20 countries, can, projects in, in 20 countries in the Latin American and Caribbean, where we have to do with the use and the uh, provision of technology for social development and economic development. The last slide that is of within my remit is to tell you that we are currently at Innovation Laboratories in Monterrey, Mexico, as Lourdes will present, but also in Kingston, Jamaica, Bogota, Colombia, and also working with different projects providing training spaces and opportunities in a in an open governance model where we have all the projects of society that may collaborate and exchange experiences with the public sector and to be able to uh, have be part of the decisions generated in the state in order to improve public services through innovation this is the general screenshot of the project, the innovation, inclusive innovation laboratory we developed with, in conjunction with Santa Catarina University, which is in the next slide. And I would like to um, give the floor to Lourdes so that she can share in full detail the work that they do in Santa Catarina. Thank you very much, Rodrigo, for your presentation. I would like to tell you a little bit of how this project has been together with um, through two programs that we have here in the Laboratory of Innovation, Inclusive Education Laboratory. But to tell you that the Technological University in Santa Catarina, we've been working some years back in order to buy 15 years because the model, education models, higher education, inclusive higher education has 
a normal formal education room in Santa Catarina. We have 16 years working in with higher inclusive education through um, our uh, programs, as you can see in the next slide, is that program higher education is a set of actions geared towards achieving higher education and also to have people with disabilities who are highly vulnerable through two aims and that is one where you have to provide all the academic and technological logistical support and in that we have the laboratory dia so that our students can have access to higher education and the second objective is to have a company such that we can have entry into into the work uh, environment using the, the skills developed such that they have a decent job and to have a salary which is a, in accordance to the to the level of training this is an example of labor inclusion because it has employer has has employed people with disabilities which point out that this is not uh, existentialist assistantialist program but with people with disabilities within the same room and the same formation professional formation and the same quality education quality and always working under the premise of the same rights and opportunities in the same educations and we go to the next slide in this you can appreciate how we can perceive or every people here we're quite clear the society here who have the barriers here in Santa Catarina is to eliminate these barriers, eliminate this this, this capacity through three axes that strengthen this inclusion model. And one is to do with accessibility, not only eliminating physical barriers, but also giving access to all information that the student may have at the same time, we have people who are trained in, in to achieve full inclusion through the te teachers that are fully aware and of the special needs and all the, that we have here in the inclusion aspects. And also to incentivize that this training and this part is where supported by the laboratory DIA because we can have tools, technological tools that allow us to transmit this knowledge to uh, students in a more simpler manner. In the case of accessibility, physical access, you can see in here in the slide an image of us in, in, in inclusive center in the, in, in the regulations here and which has all the, all the accesses and specifications such as ramps uh, signage, braille system, on all these. And also you have a technical room which has for visual uh, uh, aids for for a visual impairment and uh, they're making all this information available. So that through our laboratory, all our students can have a new access to innovative projects and have these creative moments of creativity and be supported by tools. In the case of students, deaf students who have um, a template, we have Mexican sign la, la, who have access to people who have problems. In, in this access is to have, has to do with um, the scholarship fees, and many other supports in order to support it. We can say in the next slide, please. In the laboratory die, the main aspect is to facilitate access and training, technological training, so that they can develop innovative projects and, and the skills and competencies which and provide uh, improve their economic opportunities. And here in the next image, I would like to indicate to you what is this process or cycle of work such that we get these innovative programs to function here we can see we support them 
from inscription of the record of the project, how they register the record, how they start managing the project, and to also doing it to the commercialization. Everybody works together in this form, um, in, in this period. Uh, this training was quite successful because we could generate different courses, in, even to include um, from the for formal aspects, in, uh, including the face-to-face -face modalities. Uh, given the COVID uh, pandemic, we were trained by almost 2,000 people in together with all the educational programs that we have in university. We can follow the next slide. We can appreciate here where we interact people with these capacities to be able to make the most of all the technologies and willful uh, given all the innovative projects that we work in multidisciplinary groups together with um, the uh, the careers that the university provides, educational programs that it provides regarding on the inclusive education model that we have so that they can have their projects fully available. This has been having, having 139 projects of which a high participation of all our students uh, with this capacity, with disabilities. So we can see here, we feel very proud of being able to have him Monterrey in Santa Catarina with this support uh, from this laboratory, the laboratory, because we are, what we're living through is because of COVID-19, we can have people to work and we can, so we can appreciate that this work has to prove platforms that we can follow providing all these tools to our students that who, who connect and be able to transmit all the information in, in a simultaneous manner. The, the project continue materializing. We continue having the same opportunities of development and all the abilities and, and capacities and skills, and particularly in problems in such practices that were tested through the laboratory system in together with the more education model, inclusive education model, which we had seen and developed in Santa Catarina. We developed and, and the synergy of win-win in also to, given that we have a good education, both formal and non-formal for a high group which is the level of students which have with this capacity. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Rodrigo and Lourdes. This is a, a, a tremendous contribution to do all everything that you have done regarding access and all these technological tools in order to be able to undertake this innovative project. And as you well mentioned, Lourdes, to be able to uh, give these tools and opportunities for people with and without this capacity and be able to see that you can see this rights and access to accessibility in order to be able to acquire greater tools for the independence and also for life, future life. Uh, obviously, to um, everything that has best relation and they've been learning in these countries. So I want to thank Rodrigo and Lourdes and to remind all our audience that you can ask your questions and your queries through the um, platform where you have a section where you can enter your, and, and at the end of all presentation, we will be able to um, make all these questions to the panelists. Thank you to both. Following, I want to give the floor to Carlos Kaiser from the NGO Inclusive, his Magister Innovative Curriculum Innovative from the University of the other the, the, He's a translator, interpreter of conference, ex grantee from the GICA and world focal point of the mitigation risk for people who have uh, these capacities, disability. He's executive director of, of NGO Inclusiva and who will present us the work developed by NGO Inclusiva in Chile in relation to risk and disasters, including the variable of this capacity, this capacity variable. 
Thank you for your beautiful presentation of me. I want to start to thank the organizers of this event. Also, I want to congratulate previous expositors who have placed on the table issues which are quite important. I like the dimension of justice of the project we given by the colleagues previously because often people with this capacity, we have projects and programs where we promise very many things, but we always forget justice, that people are paid what they have to be paid. is It's something which is of irreplaceable justice, irreplaceable justice. I will start over inclusive of NGO, inclusive what modality it has and what have been our advances in that. The Inclusiva NGO said uh, arises because uh, need to arise own knowledge and applied knowledge to uh, face disasters, emergencies that happen in our world. We real uh, we realized that there were several problems. Not only was there inclu exclusion of people with disabilities who continue to have in mitigation of disasters, but also there was exclusion of. Of, of what we had to know in our continent, the idea of depending from outside uh, uh, knowledge. They, they have merit. Many people in Europe who know very many things, also in the United States, but also in Chile, yes. Also in Brazil, also in Peru, also in Mexico. And why not say Colombia, Venezuela, Guyanas? What I'm, what I'm getting at is perhaps we have world visions which are uh, uh, have because inferiority of some and this idea that we are people who are deficient, who, who require support from third parties. But we, we, but the question is who doesn't need support from the third party. The, the, great, the biggest multimillionaire buys his computers somewhere else, and that is part of society, how we build society. Inclusive NGO, having reached that conclusion, I'm getting audio cuts. We generate big alliances, we work with universities, we work with governments, several agreements with several, and the concrete is now from some of our activities is training, uh, with a training which is non-formal, inclusive in, in managing disasters with disabilities, for people with disabilities. We have had some experiences in this regard, referring to after the 27th February 2010, the earthquake and tsunami that we have, NGO Inclusiva arising in 2013. That's when we gain our legal legal entity. And 2014, we got the recent award, which is award given, which allowed us to create a program wide ranging in in Peñaflor, where we understood that we need to train first the families who participated in the in the project in how to undertake their own inclusive emergency plans in, uh, in regarding emergency. This experience of two years length was made with 150 families in the municipality, Peñaflor. This grew, created alliances, experiences, and I want to tell what is our last um, uh, uh, news, latest news. Last year, we got funding which started to be executed this year as given by Metropolitan Regional Government in Metropolitan, Metropolitan Region in Chile and was approved by the Metropolitan Council. This allowed us to create a, a virtual academy to be able to develop a training program with four big courses aimed at society in the metropolitan area. These four courses start, the first course, we're very original. We put Curso A, Curso B, Curso C. We're very original. We, we, we broke our imagination. We have to have licenses to several of our collaborators for their creativity in designing the names of the courses. But the point is that this has special focus and the course, course C, we started with C, even more creative. We didn't start with A, we started with C, is a course of introduction to risk management. 
disaster risk manage management. The first of this started in September, mid-September, and the second version ended last week, the second version. In the first call, we had 200 people enrolled. In the second call, we had 290, more than 290. Currently, 289, because we have a total of 490 people who have enrolled into our latest courses. Of this, we have 290 institutions took uh, uh, an institution. We have a uh, sports group, neighborhood, neighborhood teams, uh, ministers, health services, or NEMI, which is a national office, uh, emergency office in the metro Latin area, with legal, legal service. We have and it's a long group of ministry groups and institutions, um, which has been the beautiful thing about this. We had a, a, a transverse model, which are asynchronic self-study, which makes the, so the students ask as they can take the, uh, the content whenever the platform is uh, accessible with redundancy mode for accessibility, because we know that certain aspects privilege some groups, but maybe not others. So our portal gives a possibility of self-managing their page in accordance to their needs. I want to comment on the fact this is done with sign, sign language, children's sign language, certified and validated by the, uh, by the, by the uh, people who, who are hard of hearing and do not necessarily to have measures. We have to standardize them. I want to express that given some of the success of this course is that we have different educational levels. People have one meeting a week, optional, not obligatory, in order to be uh, uh, receive the title, the, the, the degree. But when people uh, we have meet, we have people who care, those who have um, been able to talk with people who are from the state with partners who have different courses, we've been able to have, we've not been able to finish their studies, uh, have next next to them with a, doc, a PhD, uh, and they've all participated together, and they've all been exchanged experiences as in several institutions, and being in, involving their learnings in the strategic plans in, in order that we have we have a certain viewpoint in the risk management in a world which is with lives in disasters every day it is something that goes against rationality a year ago if somebody had said that we're going to have everything through zoom who would have believed that however that's normal now and for those who are chilean we always say with it 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 uh, the, we have earth tremors, we don't even feel them. Other, if not that, we have the drought. And if not that, we have flood. And if not a flood, we have poverty, <laughs> which is another a catastrophe of man-made catastrophe. In other words, we live in the emergency, but we've naturalized and normalized us, and that affects the dignity of human beings. So our course has been evolving. There's gonna be new versions which Everybody who live in the metropolitan region is available. Uh, but I have a preview here. We're, we're launching the international course. So anybody in any in every country making uh, scholarships, uh, both in English and Spanish, the inscriptions are going to be closed 28th December. It's a system of, of grants for institutions open to everybody, but through some institution. Why do we do this? Because we need to have monitor that people who take the course finish it in order to have an impact. And the question, final question is, how are we going to apply what you've learned in your institutions? I think I've, my time is up. Alejandra, yes? We're OK so far. Oh, we're OK. Perfect. Now, so I can say a few more things. The point is that risk Disaster risk management is a new discipline that's been come to the fore. The different uh, knowledges, 
has to do with risk uh, prevention from architecture, architecture to pedagogy, pedagogy to psychology. From that to epidemiology, uh, from that we're going to do very many disciplines. Self-care and, and the care of our community is something that we cannot delegate, something that we has a strong community base. We have very many different worlds that dialogue together. We've had people who talked a lot and know a lot, very much about this capacity and inclusion, but very little about risk management. And lots of expert, people who are experts in, in disaster mitigation, but had not known inclusion of people with disabilities. Why do we be, believe that education is so important? Because education is a get together of the knowledge and transforming the world. When you when you negate education, you negate, you negate the present and the future, and also the past and who we are as a people, the sense of who we are, where we go. Why do we want to get there? We are missing so many possible uh, records, so many, because, because inclusive education is not real education, it's not, because education excludes some people, then it becomes a tool of oppression. If education includes people, then it becomes an instrument of freedom. So to be free or oppressed has to do with the possibility of becoming educated and risk management or mitigation is so strong is not to educate yourself in risk management is to reduce our, our life or the quality of our life of our communities of our children and finally of the whole planet in, in disaster risk mitigation there's ecology there inserted within that i want to end by inviting us to know our experience and visit our pages i will this is triple w or whatever you say www that you put this triple W and you put ONG inclusiva.org, visit these things and our social network. I want to receive, in a, receive you in a international course in Mexico. We have a focal point. Oreti is working with us. And in other countries, we're designated through uh, special agreements. Alejandra, I want to thank you and the whole team for this tremendous experience. And we hope to be able to be with you, with the different people that are here present and supporting ourselves, of course, and hope, and I hope, please dream in the second and the third version. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos. It's such a pleasure to be able to listen to you. O ONG Inclusiva is a big organization, a great organization. As you said, this collaborative work that you do, these tools that you deliver, for and, and the situation leave us so vulnerable for to people is I think it's um, a big uh, contribution to everything that has to do with inclusion and thank congratulations for these new courses at the international level and we know that you're going to do ex be excellent because it's a big mission that you're doing a great mission that you're doing so thank you Carla for your beautiful words at the end. And lastly, I want to invite our last presenter, Rodrigo Mendes, who is founder and executive director of the Rodrigo Mendes Institute, whose mission is to guarantee that every child with this capacity, disability has access to quality education in regular schools. That's why we develop programs in several countries, a global young leader, uh, the World Economic Forum, a member of Achoca. He has worked as consultant for UNESCO and for the Angolan government. In 2017, he became the first person in, in driving a race course, a race car with his mind. Rodrigo, he's been the, the, the winning entry, open doors for inclusion as developed by the Rodrigo Mendes Institute in Brazil. Welcome, Rodrigo. Thank you, Alejandra. It's a great pleasure to be here. Gracias, Alejandra. Es un placer estar acá, especialmente sabiendo que esta es la primera eh, edición latinoamericana de Zero Project, el cual he sido yo, ha sido partícipe desde ya cuatro años. Entonces, me gustaría comenzar a presentar nuestra organización. Si pueden compartir la primera lámina. El Instituto Rodrigo Méndez es una organización sin, sin fines de lucro con la misión de garantizar que cada persona con discapacidad education in mainstream schools. 
So our uh, our structure works uh, based on a uh, three pillars uh, programs. We we work uh, producing research about best practices around the world. We promote teacher training in all uh, states of Brazil, and we also work with uh, advocacy with uh, the uh, articulation with public policymakers in order to guarantee that this agenda is also considered in our country. Going to the second slide, please. Uh, the, the Open Doors to Inclusion is, is a teacher training program uh, focused on reducing the exclusion of children and teenagers with disabilities through inclusive physical education activities. Uh, it was created by the uh, Institute, uh, UNICEF, and the Barcelona Foundation. Uh, and the project offers uh, teacher training to teachers, uh, school, and, and also to principals and public policymakers from all uh, regions and, and from other countries. So uh, changing this the, to the next slide, uh, well, one of our innovation uh, is, is the complete resignification of, of physical education, I can say. Uh, as, you, as you know, this discipline has uh, historically been driven by competition and athletic performance, which unavoidably exclude uh, many students. Uh, our project uh, approaches physical education in a different way, uh, no longer guided by competition, but guided by the commitment to allow that everyone participate, develop and have fun together. Therefore, uh, the teachers and principals that, that participate in the course need to create classes that promote the inclusion of students with disabilities. Uh, and, and at the same time, thinking about all the students. The, the consequence is the construction of a culture that values uh, human diversity and equality. So going to the next slide, uh, so far the project has impacted more than uh, 100,000 educators from uh, 26 states uh, here in Brazil. And, and the actions implemented by these professionals impacted more than uh, 8,400,000 students of public schools. Uh, and evidences show us that because of the transformative generated the transformations that are generated by the project, the students with disabilities improve significantly their learning and future perspectives. So uh, going to the next slide, I'll just, I just wanted to share one of our uh, stories regarding the impact of the project. During one of my trips around Brazil, I met Maria, a 12 years old student that was attending a fifth grade of a public school. And Maria had a, a relevant disorder and had never spoken to her friends. And because of our project, uh, Maria's teachers asked her and her classmates to think about uh, an inclusive activity together. And for everyone's surprise, she spoke for the first time. Uh, she gave her opinion and helped the group to create a new version of the badminton. Well, uh, what kind of ideas did they propose? Number one, the length of the game was reduced so that the students with autism could keep their concentration. Number two, the judge started to use a visual sign so that the deaf students understood what, what was happening. And third, uh, the court was resized in order to facilitate 
the mobility of the children on wheelchairs. The outcome was that this new badminton became the most popular activity of the school and most important, uh, Maria ended a painful silence of many years uh, and began to talk to everyone. So uh, moving to, to the next slide, uh, this, this project was considered a concrete example of a social legacy from uh, the global sports events in Brazil. And because of it, uh, I got very involved with the Olympics in Rio. I had the privilege of carrying the, the Olympic torch and, and some months later, the World Economic Forum invited me to participate in a seminar in Japan. Uh, the agenda of my panel was to discuss how the next Olympic Games can improve their social impacts. Uh, so I will now present a short video, a one minute video that uh, illustrates uh, what this uh, project intends. If you could help me on that, please. Uh, okay, so uh, this proposal generated a, a new project called One Flame. I have been invited to, to present it to audiences in, in several parts of the world. UNICEF, uh, the World Economic Forum, and many large companies embrace uh, the project when we are now planning the next step. So going to, to the end of my presentation, the, the open doors to inclusion has been funded uh, by the Barcelona Foundation uh, in partnership with UNICEF. And envisioning the long-term sustainability of, of the program, uh, the Rodrigo Mendes Institute created an endowment fund. This initiative counts on the support of the JP Morgan Bank uh, and it will contribute to the funding of future editions uh, of the teacher training. So uh, just as a, a last uh, slide here, uh, the strategic plan of Open Doors to Inclusion defined two priorities. Uh, the first is to expand the teacher training to other uh, countries of Latin America and to Europe. And therefore the online course uh, will be translated into English and Spanish. And the second is to uh, create an award to recognize the best inclusive practices created by teachers, which will, uh, we believe, inspire other professionals to promote uh, inclus inclusion and, and to change uh, their schools all around. Uh, so that's all for now. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, again, uh, congratulate for the, the event, congratulations for Zero Project and for all the, the team in Chile, uh, and I'm sending our greetings from Brazil.
Muchas gracias, Rodrigo, por tu presentación. Eh, la verdad es súper importante. Thank you, Rodrigo, for your presentation. It's very important, as you well say in your exposé, to work collaboratively and also to be able to involve all the community in these projects such that obviously uh, everybody with this capacity together with Maria can have a community, an inclusive community and be able to develop all your learnings. And in, so thank you very much, Rodrigo. And because of time pressures, and I've been told internally that there is no questions because so everything is clear so i would like to close this space where everything that's been exposed by our panelists leaves in, makes clear the great impact of the non-formal education is within the development of young and, and old and how thanks to these projects thanks to these learnings we've been able to open doors to new opportunities and new challenges where we acquire different tools for life. So I also we thank all expositors given their excellent speeches and we thank the public that's been with us. So thank you very much and I'll leave you with Carolina. Thank you, all expositors, marvelous panel, Alejandra. Uh, your words are so clear, so good. We have to continue working in, in, for an inclusive education, formal or non-formal.